after studying this module you shall be able to understand the notion of global value chain internationalization of SMEs and MMEs and their role characteristics and importance in the globalized world identify the constraints faced by SMEs and MMEs to grow their business and expand globally analyze the steps to optimize the role of SMEs and MMEs in global value chains. Globalization of small scale industries and medium scale industries. In the 21st century, the world has developed a worldwide network of economic activities including production, distribution, consumption, market access, investment, etc. The importance and dependence of individual economies on the rest of the world has increased unprecedentedly over the years. Foreign trade and investment have witnessed an increasing share of GDP of different economies in the globalized world. However, it is argued in the existing literature that the major share in production and sales is dominated by few big global giants that is multinational corporations that is MNCs and the transnational companies that is TNCs leaving very little scope for the growth of small scale and medium scale enterprises that is SMEs and MMEs globally. SMEs have always played an important role not just in developing economies of the world but also in the developed economies. The Southeast Asian economies and other countries like Brazil, Mexico and Italy have a history of successful SMEs entrance and updating in the global value chain. There is a large amount of employment generated in small scale enterprises as they are mainly a labor intensive firms. According to an estimate, SSIs generate one job against a capital of Rs 5,800 as against rupees 31,000 for large enterprises. It promotes equality and builds anti-inflationary pressures in the economy, promotes industrial peace, reduces pressure on agriculture and also promotes growth as evident in different countries of the world. In this background, it is important to learn how SMEs has evolved in the process of globalization. Are they emerging as important players in the world trade and production and distribution chains or have they found their place at the bottom of the global value chain? What contributions are they making towards the growth of globalized economies and how are they expected to evolve in the future? Economists have agreed that growth of SMEs is important for a country for a number of reasons as mentioned above. Therefore, it is important to analyze and identify the steps to promote and support globalization of SMEs and MMEs. This module focuses on globalization of small scale and medium scale enterprises. The characteristics, importance, issues in growth and location of their position in the global value chain. It also identifies the steps needed to promote the growth of SMEs and MMEs in the phase of globalization and reap the benefits of global trade. Now let us discuss about global value chains and internationalization of small and medium enterprises. In this section, we will first define globalization, then we will talk about the value chains and thus the global value chains or GVC and hence we will look at the position of SMEs and MMEs in the GVC. Globalization, value chains and global value chains. Globalization is the process and network of linkages of different economies of the world. It covers the following aspects of assimilation of people, companies, government of different economies, a set of international integration of business, production, investment, ideas and culture. It refers to the interconnection between different parts of the world that to an important extent govern the world's economic system. Value chains. A value chain is a process of value addition 
that incorporates all the activities of a business from production of a product to its delivery to the final customer and even beyond it in the form of after sale services in a simple value chain all the activities in the thread of the value chain are integral to the business process but once we deviate from this simplified version of value chain all these activities deviate across the globe and no longer remain the integral part of any business in this process of globalization of different economic activities a firm company increases its efficiency and returns a value chain consists of following links in the chain starting from production research and development distribution sales and after sales services a value chain can be depicted in this way value chain which is integral aspect of business strategy of a firm input procurement that leads to assembly then to business services such as finance hr logistics then to research and development to marketing to distribution then sales and after sales services the global value chain a global value chain exists when the activities of value chain are not all carried out within one firm or at one location but are scattered across nations in a global scenario the business process and its activities become separable and all activities get divided internationally among different locations and across different firms in this process firms work according to the highest efficiency they possess across different lengths of the value chain that is they work according to their competencies smes irrespective of their size can and have benefited from entering the global value chain the point is to ensure that smes do get a fair chance to participate in this process of globalization along with other giant players that is mncs in the market the need is to recognize the point of entrance for small sized firms in the value addition chain where they can establish their competency at the global level characteristics of small and medium enterprises in this context of the global value chain let us now look at the process of internationalization of small scale enterprises in the globalized world roles and characteristics limited resources that include capital finance technology and knowledge are the basic characteristics and challenges for smes and mmes across developed as well as developing countries many canadian smes have built up a strong place in the gvc by concentrating on the activity that they are best at in the value chain they have also utilized friendly and strategic relations with other firms to bridge the gap in resources however the lead role in the gvc is played by the giant leading firms the lead firm is typically supported by a number of suppliers who in turn are linked to suppliers and so on smes normally find themselves at the position of low level suppliers in this tiered structure the challenge faced by them is not just of entering the system but of also maintaining their position and moving up in the structure of proving their comparative advantage in terms of low cost suppliers smes are backbone of south asian economies as they account for more than 90% of all private sector firms and employ more than 60% of the population they export around 25% and play an important role in industrial growth and development countries like singapore provide a flexible pool of skilled labor and attracted mnc's that subsequently lead to the transition of the economy from planned to a market based economy global production networks and importance of the smes international linkages in the world have reached a high level of sophistication involving complicated intra firm and inter firm transactions smes play a crucial role in the production networks by being involved in inter firm fragmentation at various levels at subcontracting 
and OEM levels. They are important links in the vertical interform division of labor. In ASEAN and East Asia international movement of goods and services has increased rapidly in the past leading to economic agglomeration and growing cultures at several notable places such as the garment cluster grown in Ludhiana in India and leads to dense vertical supply chain formulation. This new form of clustering is a result of economic fragmentation at a larger level. Technology transfer and the spillovers. International linkages have opened the door for MNEs and local firms of developing countries to compete and cooperate with each other. This has led to the evolution of technology transfers and spillovers. As a result of the movement of production processes to less developed countries with technology has provided new opportunities to local and small firms. Emerging opportunities for small scale enterprises. MNCs have expanded internationally. The world is now fully converted into the GVC system. Globalization is providing new opportunities for developing countries and SMEs to enter international markets through participating in production and outsourcing. This trend has started in early 90s and has spread across many countries from East Asia and gradually to India, Australia and New Zealand facilitated by bilateral free trade agreements and regional market forces. In fact, LDCs and SMEs together have emerged as important drivers of growth, especially in Asia and Pacific regions. Outsourcing and subcontracting have provided good opportunities to SMEs to grow. Many small scale enterprises in Singapore, Hong Kong, China have expanded their business from home and have made their flexible arrangements. SMEs are gaining in the tourism and service sector. Free movement of capital and goods leads to formation of integrated single word market and the production system. Now let us discuss about the constraints on growth of SMEs and MMEs in the process of globalization. The following are the most commonly discussed issues in literature on SMEs and globalization. SMEs and technology. SMEs act as suppliers for big firms that is MNEs in local and global markets. These firms are engaged with domestic sales to foreign firms which operate in the country of SMEs operation. This leads to some opportunities of technology transfer and diversity. However, this emphasizes the fact of dependency of SMEs on MNEs for technology diffusion. The small size of these firms does not give much opportunity to SMEs to conduct research and development. Some studies have revealed that SMEs that are fortunate to enter the global market and evolved as a competitive players produced twice as many innovations as large firms to keep them in the competition. The nature of competitiveness. The markets are more demanding and competition is getting tougher with increasing trade activities and interconnection of all the economies of the world which lead to the fear of downgradation among the SMEs. The charm of traditional advantage of cheap and abundant labor is now decreasing and other non-price factors like quality, timely delivery mechanism, variety, cost efficiency are gaining relevance. This makes it imperative for SMEs to increase their profit and retain their position in GVC through concentrating on these other factors. The nature of global trade and vast options available to giant global buyers of these small suppliers raises the level of competition and thus makes it even more difficult for SMEs to survive in the global competitive environment. For example, in India, the potential big buyers criticize 
most Indian clusters to focus on static advantages like low cost labor and therefore they expect to develop less business relations with such clusters in future. Inward looking mentality. SMEs are also characterized as single owner business with a low level clustering and minimum networking. If they overcome this issue, many scholars have agreed that SMEs can build a stable position in the world in terms of greater strength, greater access to information, resources and knowledge, access to markets and inputs. In Malaysia, 79.4% of SMEs are micro establishments. Weak financial position. SMEs in most developing economies have faced problems in gaining access to finance. The reasons attributed to this are imperfect financial markets and weak secondary markets for small scale enterprises. The only major source of finance remains the traditional dependency on banking sector. The governments of different economies have adopted policies to support SMEs in this regard through subsidies and allocating formal sector resources but success remains limited and SMEs are still facing the constraint of long term finance and working capital. Lack of expertise. There is a lack of skill and expertise in organization and management that constrains the development of SMEs. In this relation, SMEs still lack ICT capabilities. That is, SMEs in Southeast Asia have yet to establish online and networking facilities. Entrepreneurship. The lack of strong leadership and business lead is another major issue faced by this has resulted in lack of innovation and R&D and high dependence on the MNCs. Strong entrepreneurship is important for small firms to adjust to dynamic market demand. Optimizing the role of SMEs and MMEs in global value chains. One big concern, especially for developing economies, is how to optimize the role of local firms and local entrepreneurs in the present international competitive environment. Some level of protection has been provided to these small firms in the past, but now at this level of competition, SMEs have to compete strongly with giant MNEs from the beginning. In this changing environment, one important question is what policies and what steps are to be taken to protect and encourage growth of SMEs in this dynamic integrated global economy. Evidence from Thailand shows positive linkages between SMEs and MNEs in machinery industry. As pointed earlier that concentrating only on low cost advantage will not help to attract and gain business in the competitive environment. The policies required are those that target technology development provision of adequate finance generation of skilled labor and imparting knowledge. Emphasis should also be on encouraging clusters and agglomeration of SMEs. Optimizing capabilities. SMEs should try to arrange necessary inputs in the process of production in terms of quantity, quality and delivery time. Southeast Asia has succeeded by optimization of these activities. In developing a sourcing network in the region from various low wage countries. This is known as triangle manufacturing. These countries now hold high positions in GVC of electronics and software industries. In this way, through optimizing capabilities, many clusters have successfully faced upgrading challenges along with growth of new clusters which perform lower value added of GVC. Optimizing design and marketing skills. It is important to move on upgrading trajectories of GVCs. MNEs mainly concentrate on high value added areas 
and outsource manufacturing related parts to small and local firms. In this regard, domestic chains offer better learning opportunities than global chains. For example, India and Brazil have developed good designing and marketing skills owing to the fact that they are catering to a dynamic domestic market before they enter the international production process which help them to think innovatively in terms of quality, customer satisfaction and serving higher market segments. Developing links with global buyers. This is necessary for successful upgrading trajectory of clusters in chains. This defines how producers are related to end markets. The more knowledgeable the producers are about the buyer's preferences, the more equal are their relationships. The degree of dependence also depends on number of buyers in the market. Suppliers selling to large number of buyers, as in case with footwear cluster in Venta, Italy, selling to large number of buyers in Germany enjoy greater independence and more learning opportunities as compared to the firms selling to one giant buyer. Gaining three C's that is clarity, competency and the compatibility. To attain success in the global integrated world firms must ensure at the micro level they possess the three qualities of clarity of their strategy and clarity about their competencies that is what link in the GVC are they best at and what strategy can they follow to take benefits from this comparative advantage. They should also focus on their ability to develop compatibility with other players in the market and develop harmonious business relationship at vertical and horizontal linkages. The success of SMEs in Hong Kong Taiwan, India, China, Thailand and Singapore is because of the coordinated, comprehensive and stable policies. Now let us summarize what we have learned from this module. SMEs and MMEs have played an important and crucial role in the process of globalization. In this module, we have tried to find an answer to the question that why SMEs have performed relatively better in some countries while failed in others, which in fact requires an in-depth analysis of socio-economic and political factors specific to different countries segregated at different levels of sector specific and firm specific in today's dynamic globalized era. We further try to identify how some of the characteristics of SMEs in the present era can be analyzed to frame policies and optimize their returns and developing SMEs. The role of government policies and creation of agglomeration and clusters by creating a coordinated and friendly business environment is important for small scale enterprises development. ICT should be encouraged by framing policies and information and database creation at the national level. Strengthening of the financial assistance to SMEs is another major area of improvement so as to solve these problems related to availability of capital that restrains and limits the availability of resources to SMEs. Optimization of capabilities, designing and marketing skills along with individual evaluation of firms on the criteria of three C's will help in strengthening SME's position in GVCs. The role of government is crucial in this process of globalization to develop ideal business climate, finance, organization, knowledge upgradation, networking and creation of skill based labor and to promote innovations along with their dissemination to SMEs. Global integration has led to dispersal of various activities of GVCs across the globe with each firm carrying out activity according to its comparative advantage. This process has benefited the markets in terms of reduced cost of production, increased profits, 
variety of products and competitive prices. This process therefore necessarily needs a strong and consistent growth of SMEs in different regions of the world. Policies should be framed to decrease transaction costs, improve business environment and promotion of seamless and equal opportunity market structure across the world.